Hi everyone, welcome to 10 Minutes Astrology, the most easy way to learn astrology. I'm Roda Chang. I am Alejo Lopez. Oh, I just noticed that when every time I'm concentrating on reading something because I have a script to read, and I just noticed because today I just noticed Alejo keep doing something. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm always doing something, of course. <laughs> no, I was you should, I, I don't want to say nervous, but I would just like read read the script just in case I, I forget something. Yeah. Well, but today I know I'm not going to forget something because there's uh, some uh event you're going to announce right in july you're quite busy <laughs> in july i'm quite busy i'm usually always busy but okay. yes i i wanted to to invite everyone on thursday mm -hmm. july the 7th i'm mm -hmm. going to be doing a talk for aquarius Severn mm -hmm. on astrocartography mm -hmm. um yeah so if anybody wants to learn about about it the idea of astrocartography is to project the natal mm -hmm. chart on the globe, mm -hmm. uh, sort of speak. And basically, instead of looking at how time is going to affect us, we're mm -hmm. going to try to see how place it's going to affect yeah. us. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yes. So, well, uh, we will post the uh, information in our description area. So if you are interested to join Alejo's talk uh, about uh, astrocartography, you can click the link and see how to join. But also the... I think a week after is our talk. Yes. The Astrology of Happiness. happiness. I still, yeah, still really looking forward to, 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 to listen to that talk because it would be so interesting. It's on the uh, Saturday, 16th July, 1 p.m. Yeah. UK time. So this is a two talk for you. Wow, this is quite busy. And then, then today, I think we are talking about the sun is also usually quite busy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we, today we're talking about Virgo. Yes, Virgo. Yes, and they are they are hard working, right? This this sign is a a a, a usually the represent some some hard working people who constantly keep moving, keep adjusting. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yes, it's about that. It's about making adjustments to make things uh, work. Yes. So how about, I mean, always when we learn a sign, if we want to know the archetype and the basic meaning of a sign, we can start from the mythology. We can also try to read from the uh, quality modality and the element and the layer ruling planet. And mm -hmm. usually we will start with uh, mythology and the story about the archetype of this, uh, this sign. Alejo, so what do you think, what do you usually use? So I like to share the story because we always use the stories, well, not always, but we tend mm. to use the stories from Greek mythology. Yes. Sometimes, uh, the other day you shared the story from uh, Buddhism. And to explain Virgo, I like to share the story from... The Christian pantheon, actually, which oh, is the story yeah. of Virgin Mary. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, the idea, well, actually, if you look at the symbol of Virgo, is a woman yeah. uh, holding a spear of wet, wheat. Mm -hmm. and, um, and this is the Virgin, right? This is supposed to mm -hmm. be, this is the Virgin. Uh, so basically, in the, in, in the New Testament, what it says in the Bible is that the uh, Virgin Mary was there at home and suddenly this angel showed up. The first thing the angel said is, do not fear, mm -hmm. uh, which I think it's very interesting. Every time in the Bible there's an angel, the first thing they say is, do not fear. And I think it's, I mean, imagine you're at your home, you're at your place, reading your book and suddenly <laughs> this thing <laughs> appears out of nowhere. So the first thing they say is do not fear. Yeah, and... I think, I think, I think they will already get a few shots if they are, <laughs> if they appear in United States, in Chuta, <laughs> bang, bang, bang. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, so uh, he appears and he says, do not fear. And he says, you have been selected by God to be the mother of his son, basically. Janan, and it's quite interesting because in a way he's asking her if she accepts this mission or not, ah. and she says, "Let it be thy will." So she accepts the mission, and I think mm. this is the idea of Virgo. The idea of Virgo is the idea of service. It's the ah. idea that there's something greater than ourselves that is mm -hmm. asking us to do to to have 
to do something, to do a task that is mm -hmm. necessary for the unfoldment of things, in this case, for the mm. unfoldment of history. And yeah. we can accept to do it or not. But if we accept to do it, it's like, you know, the Virgin Mary is seen as the queen, uh, as the queen of heavens, but she's mm -hmm. also seen as a very humble uh, character. Mm -hmm. So it's through humility that she becomes the queen. Actually, that's what she says. She says that mm. because she accepted the God's will, she who is no one, is just one woman from this, from this mm -hmm. village, has now been raised up to the category of being a queen. Mm -hmm. And so this is the idea of Virgo, the idea of service and the idea of uh, the idea that the context is more important than the self. The, the, mm. What's around me is more important than, the, than myself. To make mm. things work is more important than myself. And through that humbleness, to, through mm -hmm. being humble, is that mm -hmm. we become praised, we become uh, important, let's say. It is so interesting because, um, as I know, I, I don't know if that correct or not, I really really need to do a little bit more more research on that but uh, if the, the 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 data and the article i read is correct in the babylonian time this area of sky belonged to two goddesses belonged to two goddesses and the one is goddess of a date the, the fruit date not the dating <laughs> the fruit of date <laughs> <laughs> and another another part is the uh, goddess of the uh, 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 grain. So, so it's, it's like a Virgo sign. It's like a Virgo mm -hmm. sign. So um, so it is very interesting. This area first, about the lady, about the goddess. Mm -hmm. And second, this area is about agriculture. And yes. uh, it's like uh, you collecting, because the no matter the grain or fruit, you, you have to collect it. and. Uh, we know the, the, the Virgo sign is from changing from summer to the autumn in the North Hemisphere. Mm -hmm. And this is the time when the fruit is ready and when the most the grain is ready, ready to, you know, to harvest. So it's yes. a sign of uh, working really hard during this time. You have to constantly just collecting the fruit and, uh, and the harvest the, the crop or something that, that you can get ready for the autumn. And so the one that people have this side, sun in this side, moon in this side, in Virgo, Venus in Virgo, they always just keep working, thinking, constantly, constantly moving. Yeah. Apart from, I also think, yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. it's a, when we were talking about the qualities of the sign, it's mutable. Yes. It's yes. mutable earth. So yeah. it's about making changes. But it's yeah. earth, so it's about making real, practical changes in order mm -hmm. to have results. And I agree. You were relating it to agriculture, and I think that's agriculture, right? It's reshaping yes. the earth in order to have what we need. Wow, I like this idea. So it's also, it's not like, a, I like that uh, people talking about uh, the gardening or agriculture. Is like a, you, you plant things on the place you want, and you remove those things you don't want away from you. Exactly. Land. Yes. Exactly. And that is and, really Virgo. Yeah. Exactly. That's why psychologically, then this becomes a skill, right? To be critical, to be analytical, to see oh the, the details and what needs to be yes. taken out, what actually it's working. You know, these Virgo people, like, people have a lot of Virgo. Right? These people that they enter into a room and they they see when something is out of order, out of balance, even if it's a small little detail, you know, like mm -hmm. uh, they have this, I have a friend who is a big one, when she reads, if, she, if I give her something to read, she will, the first thing she sees is the comma that I didn't put, you know, it's like the dots that I miss, these kinds of things, they see the details. Yeah. And that's why they are fantastic. They are fantastic, but uh, when they, when they, if they, if they work with me, they want to kill me because of my, the failing, <laughs> the, the punctuation, the, the comma, where's the mark? is always like a whoo falling apart because I have a Mercury in Pisces. Which is quite <laughs> the opposite. <laughs> yeah, totally opposite. You know, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. You know, no, I don't understand because it runs failing and then this is this mark should not be here and then this I don't know what what are you talking about. So for them, everything, every place, everything should have a right place for them. And they are trying to find the best place, best position for everything. That's why yes. we say 
the order, the order is, uh, I think, is a key word for Earth element. But uh, try to adjust the order, adjust the right place. That's the mutable with Earth side. So you know, make a right, make things to have a better structure, have a better, better order to, you know, to make things work, like you say. This is yes. so interesting. But how about Mercury play the role in the in the Virgo, because it's a ruling planet? Well, I think it has to do with this <laughs> idea of dissecting, you know, the idea of the mind trying to analyze and scrutinize reality. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's interesting because uh, Mercury in astrology, there are few functions about communication, about uh, uh, traveling, but also about uh, thinking and uh, analyze and uh, collecting yeah. data. Uh, we, when, with Mercury ruling the, 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 the Gemini, it's because it's a positive sign, masculine sign. So it's more obvious, more acting. So with, with communication and the moving and driving and traveling. But with the negative or feminine idea is more quiet. You couldn't mm -hmm. see it. So it's more analyzed, more, more thinking in your mind, in your head. So that is very interesting. Sometimes you have to see those uh, planets, ruling planets to add the information in. So today we should do a little bit, you know, example about when planet move into Virgo, what planet we should choose? Uh, I would say let's choose the moon. Well, basically, let me play Virgo. Basically, moon is not planet. <laughs> <laughs> it's so very cute. good, actually. That, okay. That's what somebody <laughs> with, someone with a lot of Virgo would say. But why do you yeah. say the moon is a planet? The moon is not a planet, <laughs> yeah, it's a satellite. Sure. Yeah. But it's also quite funny because I think I read a, a, a post today and, the, and people talk like that. So I just like this side, when you say the moon, I say, I'm going to, to play Virgo side for you. But basically I don't have any planet in Virgo. So anyway, <laughs> but, but yes, but, that's you Virgo. Know, they were, mm -hmm. I remember one client I had who had moon in Virgo and everything I said, he was like, no, that's not it. And then he would say almost the exact same thing, but with a little tiny twist at the end. Of course. He was like, no, actually what I feel is, and I was like, come on, it's the same that I just said. You know, it's like just the little twist at the end. And it was, he's moon in Virgo. Yes. Like yes, he needed Virgo. to be very precise. Sometimes precise. I would ask him questions and he would say, no, that never happened to me. And then he would tell a story. And I was like, but that's what I asked you before. And I was like, no, you asked, this thing which is almost the same but it's not the same if i didn't make the exact correct question he would say no it's not happening yeah it's very interesting yes okay so uh uh we talk about moon sorry moon we i, I should not <laughs> interrupt but moon in virgo moon in virgo so so the moon to... is what we need to feel loved right so we feel mm -hmm. safe yeah. yes so a moon in virgo will think that i'm loved when I'm efficient, when I'm practical, when I adapt ah, to my environment, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they develop this skill for service to other people and for service to their, whatever is happening to make mm. things better. They mm. might also develop this critical skill, like they can immediately see what's not working. They might be mm. very good at handling resources because they, you know, they make things work and they, they pay attention to the details. Yeah. I think the danger might be that because they feel loved when when they know they're functional to their environment, they might over adapt sometimes. They might not yeah. see their own needs. What do you think? Yeah, I I agree because they are they are born to serve and that they need to, to feel they need to be useful. They exactly they not, yes. they, they, they not only want to, they have to be useful. And so this is they are they kind of a they probably thinking that their life purpose, life meaning is I'm here to service everyone. I'm helping everyone, which is lovely, which is sweet, to be honest. It's lovely and sweet. Yeah. But also so sometimes really need to find out is that, you know, is that the only things you want to do in your life? Is there anything else should be considered? But the moon in Virgo is quite important. Service people and to be useful is super important in, yeah. in their life.
Yes. And but it's very I practical. Think... It's these people it that is. they find a solution out of everything. If you have a problem, go to the moon in Virgo. They will work yeah. it out for you. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's quite interesting because sometimes when I, I mean, I mean, I, I remember I talked to someone have a moon in Virgo and I probably just like, you know, whining or complaining, you know, but they were like a try to help you. I said, no, 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 I'm just talking about it. We say, oh, they couldn't, they couldn't, they couldn't, they couldn't accept that you are all, only just, uh, just talking. You, you, yeah. I need to find a solution for you. <laughs> exactly. oh, that's very yeah. sweet. That's very sweet. <laughs> yes. yes. So um, part from this, how about exercise? Part one, because we understand that the, the moon in Virgo, so their security feeling and uh, their, their, their everyday things and that they need is about to be, to be uh, useful, to service and to, to analyze, to analyze the situation. What about we give a little bit exercise to our audience today? Okay, I would think of two exercises. One, Ooh. to think of Mars in Virgo. How would Mars, Mars in Virgo, in Virgo. Act? Yeah, yes. And the other one, to think the Ascendant, because we haven't been touching the Ascendant a lot for the last... Mm. <laughs> yeah, I think true. Yeah. True. Yes, so yes. try to think about the Ascendant in Virgo. What happens when Virgo is rising in contrast to this Moon in Virgo? Like try to compare. Ah, yeah. yes. I'm perfect. trying to see what would be the difference. Yeah. Well, it's not just because we talk about Virgo sign, so we give more exercise. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I think it's interesting how the signs constellate. Like when we were doing Cancer, we were yeah. we were struggling to find the words. When we were yeah. doing Leo, we were like, oh, pff, well, all, all the image <laughs> and, and, and all over everywhere. But when we talk about Virgo, we just uh, work, 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 work. We're like giving you more work. work. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> which, which is interesting. And uh, to, I think, uh, believe me, this is this is not planning. We are just like <laughs> spontaneous. The, the, we follow the, we follow the uh, astrology. We follow the sign energy, follow the planetary energy. Just like, uh, we just go with it. And then you, <laughs> Alejo can give you two homework. I'm not going to give you more than so that homework. I exercise. So first is a Mars in Virgo. Think about how to interpret the Mars in Virgo, how they protect themselves, how they exercise themselves, how they express themselves, but mm -hmm. also ascend them. What ascendant about? It's about uh, how they how they see this person, their first image, and their connection with the world, right? Yes. Yeah. So how the Virgo ascendant see the world? How the people see Virgo ascendant? That, and uh, compare to compare with the Moon in Virgo. That will be so interesting because you will find out it's not you know every planet or angle in a sign they still have different function they still work in different way yes. well before we finish today i will remind you on the 7th of july alejo's talk for the uh, astro cartography and on the Thank 16th you. july there is the Astrology of Happiness, based also for Alejo. And uh, well, thank you for listening and watch 10 Minutes Astrology. This week we talk about Virgo. We really hope you enjoy the exercise. <laughs> if you have a question and uh, you know, feedback, please join our Facebook group at the 10 Minutes Astrology. Also, you can send us the email at aoa.inquiry at gmail.com. You can find me wrote in the Instagram at A-O-A-U-K-R-O-D. And then for Alejo, you can find his Instagram in... Liminal Cosmos. At Liminal Cosmos. Well, next week, we're going to talk about the next sign. Libra. Alejo. Libra. Okay. Well, before that, stay in tune. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>